Ben. How are you? Hi, Tatiana. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm really enjoying what I've seen so far of Big Nate. Thank you. Uh, what did you know about the comic strip or about the novels or anything about the world of Nate before you came in? No, that's a great question. You know, I actually, I'm 37, so I think I missed, like, the initial uh, Big Nate surge. So it was new to me when I auditioned for it. And then that was actually a really cool process of diving in and seeing what a passionate fan base the franchise already has from the, the book series and the comic strip. So it's been really fun for me to kind of retroactively uh, almost educate myself on the world of Big Nate. But at the same time, our show takes that source material and elevates it to mm. new storylines, original storylines, new characters coming in. And so, you know, I there's a responsibility certainly to honoring the source material, but also in kind of introducing a whole new generation of fans to these these beloved characters. Absolutely. And as you were diving in and elevating further, what aspect of Nate himself or of the world surrounding him excited you the most? Gosh, you know, certainly every job you get as an actor is a win. But this one has been a dream come true because I see so much of myself in Nate uh, and vice versa. Like I grew up, you know, when I was in sixth grade, I had trouble making friends. I was kind of, you know, an introvert. And I spent my time doodling and drawing. Well, Nate Wright doodles and draws on the show. In fact, mm -hmm. we have a CGI show, but we mix in wonderful 2D animation and doodles, Nate's drawings on the show. So you know, if you were to talk to anybody that I went to elementary school with, they'd be like, oh yeah, Ben, the, the artist, right? <laughs> um, so it's really just full circle moment to play a character that doodles. And in many ways, this is like a sixth grade do-over for me because Nate has all of this confidence and bravado and this really tight-knit group of friends. Uh, and I don't know if I'd really had that confidence when I was growing up. Uh, and so now, I get to go to PS38 every week with my real life friends who are the cast and mm -hmm. uh, and get into some hijinks and misadventures. So it's just an absolute treat. I love that. Speaking of that tight knit, tight knit circle of friends, can you describe the dynamic, the very special dynamics he has with each of them, especially Dee Dee, you know, and then of course, uh, Teddy. Yeah, no, it's a great question and one that is deeply rooted in real life because I was lucky enough to be cast on this show with three of my existing really good friends. Oh, that's so awesome. So, so Arnie Pantoja, who plays mm -hmm. Teddy Ortiz, is my real life writing and improv partner. Uh, oh. And so, so much of our riffing back and mm -hmm. forth, our improvisational comedic sort of duo that we have mm -hmm. is really represented in the Teddy and Nate dynamic on the mm -hmm. show. Uh, Arnie's a wild animal, so is Teddy, and <laughs> and you'll see that in the show. I just had, you know, uh, two, two, three months before booking Big Nate, I had done a play with Bryce Charles, who plays Dee Dee, who is the theatrical one. Yes! And so, you know, in many ways, we're all playing very elevated versions of our real selves. You know, Bryce is a cosplayer, and here she is playing the theatrical Dee Dee Holloway on the show, you know. Arnie's a comedic lunatic, and you will see that with Teddy. Uh, and then Daniel and I, this is funny, we're all the guys on the show are super short in real life. You wouldn't know it by us sitting in our home voiceover studios. But Daniel and I met at a Christmas elf audition back in the day because we were both wearing Christmas elf ties. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> the long and short of it mm -hmm. is we have this basis of real friendship to root our characters in. And that was all coincidental, but I think it really helped bond the show, especially since this entire thing has been recorded during the pandemic. Yeah. You'll see this television show and you'll never believe that none of us have ever been in the same room. So you do this all like in isolation, not even with like the voice director there with you, right? Uh, no. So I think what makes our show so mm -hmm. interesting and unique, I've never seen or heard of a show that's been created this way before, mm -hmm is despite the fact that we're all recording it from our COVID safe home studios <laughs> at home, mm -hmm. we still record as an ensemble. So once a week we get on a Zoom mm -hmm. and we get to riff with each other. So oh, we're on so with great. Mitch Watson, our mm -hmm. showrunner, our voice director, the other actors. And I think that is the beauty of the performances in the show mm -hmm. because there's so much improv. We're able to riff off of each other. We're able to um, react to one another. You get those little, granular moments of comedy magic that you wouldn't have mm. if you were just sort of sitting by yourself in a room. 
So I give the team a lot of credit for figuring out a way for us to still record this show as an ensemble because I think it has created some really beautiful friendships and relationships mm -hmm. and comedy gold uh, <laughs> in the in the end product. Yeah, I love that. No wonder it does feel very fresh and familiar, if you will. Now, talking about like this real life friendships and being like your own character. Um, I find it funny that Dove Cameron is then playing like your elder um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> disgruntled sister. What is that glorious war of sibling rivalry like for Nate and for you? Yeah, well, it's a great question and one that I can once again reference my own life in. I am an older <laughs> brother. I have a younger sister, four and a half years younger. And growing up, we just had this sort of combative relationship. I love my sister. We're huge mm -hmm. fans of each other now. But, you know, inevitably growing up, you're going to have some some tiffs with one another. Mm -hmm. And I think that that kind of dynamic is a very familiar one for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so certainly it's reflected in my relationship with Dove on the show. Uh, she plays Ellen so perfectly, just this like aloof teenager that wants nothing to do with her little brother. And he kind of loves sort of ribbing her and, and, and annoying her. Um, and that age dynamic is quite similar to the age dynamic that I had with my own sister, mm -hmm. except obviously in reverse. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think it's just that classic. I think it's going to feel, if you have a sibling, the dynamic that I have with Dove is going to feel very comedically familiar. Mm, I'm excited for that. I love <laughs> I love what I've seen so far already, and I know there are many more places it can go. It's true. Speaking of the places that we will go, uh, you said we get to um, elevate or bring it out of the stories that already exist. What avenues are you most excited to explore, or where do you hope it goes if it continues? Yeah, it's a great question. I think what's so fun about doing an animated show is you can get wild with the gags because you don't actually have to film it in real life. I, I have a production company, so I direct commercial uh, commercials and music videos and stuff. So I know how how, you know, it's difficult to actually film things. So with an animated series. You know, we have a vertical slide on the playground of PS38 where it's this just crazy, <laughs> awful slide where kids just sort of fall into yeah. themselves. It's <laughs> hysterical. Uh, so we're able to get away with some very broad visual gags on the show that, you know, you wouldn't be able to do if it was an on-camera show, certainly. Um, in terms of the adventures, I, you know, Nate's a prankster. He's mischievous. He's, he's uh, precocious. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that, you know, when you have a character that really has no fear in terms of getting himself into a little bit of trouble and bringing his friends along for the ride, mm -hmm. it can go in so many exciting places. Mm -hmm. I give the writing team a lot of credit. The the writings, the writer's room, is the, the scripts they're churning out is just hysterically, hysterically funny. Uh, and, you know, we it's just such a pleasure every week mm -hmm. to read through and say, wait a minute, they made an entire episode <laughs> out of tainted pizza? Uh, <laughs> it's, yes. It's brilliant stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's and you know, it's you know, everybody's got their own style of comedy. It just is my style of comedy. It's just irreverent. It's a little edgy, which mm -hmm. I I love. You know, if kids can handle that kind of that kind of edge, and it's fun to sort of see um, Nickelodeon and Paramount Plus embracing uh, a little bit of edgier humor. Right. And uh, and certainly the existing fan base of Big Nate is going to appreciate that edgier side of the show. Yes, exactly. And the parents who read it once upon a time can now exactly. enjoy with their kids. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to see the rest of it and for the fan base to get to witness it too. Thank you so much. Great <laughs> to meet you. You too. Have a great day.